Uh, looks like record is enabling and we could start. So, uh, hello guys. Hello Yaroslav, Roma. <laughs> Welcome back from vacation. <laughs> and I share agenda. So, first our presenter is Yaroslav Rogozan. Yaroslav, please. Okay, hey guys. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, so the task is related to the current issue. So the main idea of the task is uh, providing a possibility to apply uh, coupons to, to the shopping cart. And we have created this uh, flow already. So uh, we have added uh, an additional mutation uh, to our uh, code GraphQL module. And this mutation allows to apply coupons to the existing shopping cart for, uh, for logged in customers as well as for uh, guest users. So as an example, we have, uh, so let's, uh, I, I will describe the process a little bit. Uh, within the scope of uh, shopping cart operations, we worked, we decided to work with a uh, hashed cart ID. So not with uh, the real cart ID, uh, it's in, uh, not with the integer, but with the hashed value. Uh, we have the similar flow uh, in the REST API, but in the REST API, we work with, with the hashed IDs only in case of guest users. But uh, within the scope of GraphQL, we work with hashed ID uh, for uh, both uh, logged in customers and uh, guest customers. So uh, we decided to go this way because uh, it's more transparent um, uh, for them, like for the realization and um, uh, so we can use the hashed ID always for, uh, for both uh, logged in and guests. And uh, we uh, transfer the cart ID as an argument and the coupon code. Uh, so I, I have just copied this value from the database to speed up the process. And yeah, as you can see, we have, uh, in case of the successful operation, we have a response with uh, the applied coupon code. And uh, if we try to apply this code once again, or it's another code, uh, we get the error message that uh, the coupon code is already applied to current shipping card. And uh, in this case, we need to remove the previous coupon and apply the new one. Uh, and we have introduced this operation as well, this mutation. It calls remove coupon from card. So we pass the uh, hashed card ID and it just removes the existing coupon code, the active coupon code from, from this card. Um, and if we try to apply, for example, some, uh, the coupon for some non-existing shopping card, uh, we'll have error this, that this card uh, does not exist. And also if we try to apply some, some coupon code that uh, also not existing coupon, uh, so, sorry, it's the same card. We need to remove this coupon first of all, and then apply some. Yeah, so we, we have a, a message that the coupon code is not valid for, because we don't have such coupon code. Um, yeah, that's that's the first one. We have some, some minor adjustments for uh, customer authentication we are working on uh, at the moment. And uh, I can jump, if you have any question, please ask. That was good. Great, thank you. All right, we can move to the next point of our agenda. 
Okay, next uh, point uh, will be present also Yaroslav, and we will talk about interfaces uh, that uh, which uh, will help, which will, which hide, uh, sorry, which help us to, to hide, to encapsulate uh, convertation logic between mask ID and quote ID and uh, avoid uh, boolean plate codes. Uh, yeah, so as I said before, uh, we work always with uh, hashed ID and um, uh, in, with Magento REST API, for example, we can retrieve the hashed card ID only in case if we create an empty card for guest customer. But we don't have like transparent possibility to convert uh, the existing uh, quote ID. Uh, the real quote ID to the hashed ID. We need to perform, uh, we, we need to work with uh, database directly to retrieve the value, to create this value, and it's not very handy. And uh, we decided to provide an interface and entry point for uh, converting the real card ID to hashed ID and vice versa. So we, ha we have introduced this to interface uh, in uh, the quote module. So you can find it here. So we have uh, interface uh, with name masked quote ID to quote ID. And the second one is uh, quote ID uh, to masked quote ID. And uh, the implementation of these interfaces is uh, quite simple. Uh, but uh, yeah, previously uh, we didn't have this possibility uh, somewhere in the core. Uh, especially we, we cannot, we, could not use it uh, using the interfaces uh, or some contracts, let's say. But now we have such possibility and uh, it will be helpful uh, for everyone who works with uh, card operations, especially with card mutations, because we need to perform this conversion uh, every time we work with uh, the shopping cart. So, yeah. And that's it from my side, thank you. Thank you, Roslav. And it looks like we not, do not to forget to cover the Swiss integration test. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have uh, covered this uh, logic with integration tests in order to check that uh, we have, like, uh, we uh, considered all possible scenarios. For example, if we pass a non existing quote ID or so, so we just need to be sure that we catch all exceptions and uh, do not uh, allow some database exceptions or so. So yeah, that's why we, we have created integration tests for this purpose. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we can move to the next point. Uh, as, as you know, Roma Glushko now are working on shopping cart mutation and uh, he has got a few questions and looks like it's, it's time to discuss these questions with Alex Palerush. So Roma? Yeah, hi guys. Um, I'm just took a task uh, from Story, and um, yeah, about this I got a couple of question, really quick question, and probably uh, the, to you, Alex. So uh, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Mm, do you see it? Yes. So yeah, that's a pretty simple and small task. It should be. Uh, it's about adding the simple product uh, to the cart. And uh, right now I'm on the stage uh, of investigating the proposed schema. And I uh, have a, a couple questions to it. And uh, yeah, the first one, um, can you guys please um, tell me what the purpose of this um, type resolver yeah, and how should it work under the hood? Because probably that's the main uh, stuff I need to implement and it affects the other tasks. So I need to be sure that I completely understand that I have a comprehensive view of what we're gonna have in the end. So yeah, that would be great to clarify what the, what the component should be. And probably it's already developed somewhere in a pull request. So yeah, can you please clarify so, that? Well, basically, type resolver, what it does, it allows you when uh, our server generates response, uh, it has some fields. And type resolver allows to understand 
what exact type, what exact implementation should be returned uh, in response. Like GraphQL framework uses this type resolver uh, to, to create object basically of specific type. And we have example, we don't have implementation for this specific type resolver, but we have examples for product interfaces. Like for product, and for product query, we have also um, product interface and some other interfaces. And basically product interface can be resolved to all these different uh, product types that we have. And Where can I find that um, example? Yeah, so uh, I will probably send you a link to implementation. I, I don't know where this class is located off, off the top of my head, but uh, I just know that like, you can resolve interface. You, if you have interface with multiple implementations, you need to implement this type resolver. And uh, you can just probably look at that example, and it's also like this product type, so most likely you will have to do something similar here. So that probably add a link to the task. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that would be perfect. Uh, so uh, this uh, composite should be filled out via uh, the XML or something like that. Is it true? Uh, which composite? This one we are talking about. So uh, as I understand, it should be somehow filled out. So probably that would be via XML, yeah. the IXML, right? Yeah, this is for modularity purposes because mm -hmm. different product types are defined in different modules. And that's why we need to have uh, some extensible extension point, which we can use to uh, define those res uh, resolvers, type resolvers. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And also the, the second and probably the last question, because it's pretty clear for me now. Um, I see that... Uh, there is mutation that uh, directly related to simple product and to this uh, scope. And also, I also see the related uh, types yeah, and uh, schema component that looks like uh, abstract, like um, cart. Yeah, yeah that's kind of this, uh, this one. So we should have, in my case, two models. One will be provide this uh, point of extensibility, and the second one will be using it right to enable uh, integration with simple product. Is that true? Uh, so we should actually split all these types between uh, respective modules. So let's say if you have card, then it most likely will go to a quote module, and if you have a definition of simple product, then it will most likely go to a catalog module. But we need to like for now. Uh, this is definition without look at modularity. And in scope of your task, you should uh, decide how to decompose this type's declaration between modules, basically. Mm -hmm. so you can create any modules which are necessary for, for this. Like if, for example, but most likely they're already created because we already have a uh, product query and all product related modules should be already created. So most likely you will have to add some declarations to those schemas. Uh, can you also maybe send me a link to that uh, pull request or tasks if they so if they are created already just to take a look and uh, yeah to understand the uh, uh, tasks for what for product query yeah probably yeah yeah those were implemented in the phase one of GraphQL project when it was internal development and there are no GitHub issues it was uh, internal Jira and I'm not sure if you will be able to find them but I can just send you a link to uh, schema basically you can just look at catalog GraphQL module and mm -hmm. GraphQL schema. And you will find declaration for product interface and for everything else. And including this uh, composite type resolver for uh, product interface. But I will uh, add those things to the task itself as well, just for transparency. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. With that, um, that's all from my side. Thank you very much for explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Roma. <clears throat> we are waiting for the stickers because it will be example for another, like configurable products, so on. Clear. Okay, uh, next our topic is about code coverage by API functional test. Uh, now we have a few open pull requests without uh, API functional test. Also, we already merged a few pull requests without test, but we consider it uh, that our uh, functionality should 
maybe must be covered uh, by uh, API functional tests. And Tomas uh, helped us with this problem. Tomas. Hello. Today I will show you the test coverage for the tuple requests. I will share my screen. Uh, so uh, the first uh, uh, the first uh, was about the CMS page block uh, coverage I made uh, by two pull requests. It's about the it's about the pull request that you can see here. Uh, oh no, it's wrong. So is the pull request was made by Roma Glushko. Um, let's start the test. We will get some uh, fixtures and we can test it manually also. So as you can see, we will uh, try to get uh, the information from the CMS page. We can do this manually also by running this on page one. As you know, it's no road page. So let's see it. Mm, we got no such entity. Um, and the test passed. Mm, interesting. Uh, let's try another page. So now you can see the privacy and policy page. Uh, and also you can run any page. Now this functionality works and cover this test. Uh, the other is for CMS block. So you can get the identifier, title and content of uh, block you have. <laughs> so we check the basic uh, the base fields and uh, check the presence of hmm. uh, probably I have uh, haven't merged uh, all the changes because uh, those changes are not merged you can see that I merged them locally and some problems uh, are here. And the last one is about the breadcrumbs that were introduced by the pull request. Um, you can uh, try to manually add this uh, pass with categories and uh, just check it manually or let's run test. So here we check that uh, if uh, the category is, uh, if we ask for existing category, we have uh, all the fields, but if we ask for a non-existent category, we uh, get only that category is equal null and uh, there are no other fields. For example, So here you see that only category is only field of uh, the response. And if we ask for the, and so now I do not have categories. Let me create them. I hope that this script will work for me. Uh, 
I will change to my URL. There was a mistake. So I cannot do this now, but I, I we can do this manually if you want me to show you. Uh, Thomas, don't worry. Uh, we have green bills on this pull request. This means that all test. Uh, maybe you have problem. Uh, yes, I have some problems because I uh, I did this manually, and there could be probably with merging uh, some problems with merging. Okay, so thanks. thank you. Thank you. And looks like that's all for today. Uh, only one. Some, somewhat un unrelated question. So we have, can you hear me? Yes. So I missed a bunch of groomings here. So well, first, was the problem of modularity of API functional that discussed? Like the, the, the fact that an extension can add a field to a card and we'll, it will need the way to add field to the test. Yeah, so Anton, the problem is the same as for uh, any other with their tests, and mm -hmm. we support it on framework level. And yeah. it was... What's our status there with that API framework and modularity? We are not working on that, at least for now. Yeah, the decision was that it's, it's good enough for now, and we may improve it in future, but not, not, not yet. Okay, so it's it's not related to this epic, I agree, but uh, that's one of the important things for for us. As we want to move towards the state where we can automate validation, and without modular API functional, but especially taking into account that we'll be migrating to PWA and, uh, and API only communication on forefront, this will be uh, very important. Yeah, I suppose we can discuss it when Misha gets back, uh, but at least maybe like half a year we had this discussion and at that point uh, we decided that this is not a priority because we have so much other priority items like this coverage and framework. Okay, okay that's probably a different topic that we have to discuss. Another question uh, in the schema for API, GraphQL API for checkout, and not only checkout, for all, uh, for all mutation operations, are all operations impotent today, retriable? Did we pay attention to well, First of all, we just started implementing mutations. We need to analyze them at the one by one. We, we have very few mutations so far. It's probably just two or three mutations. And obviously all queries are impotent and all mutations we need to make sure that they are. Yeah, yeah please don't forget. That should be that should be ability to retry safely retry them. So the only concern is, let's say, if you have uh, add product to cart, um, it will be added like twice. Like how how do you make it impotent? Mm -hmm. That's what comes to my mind. And other operation seems to be impotent so far. Um, yeah, let's think about it. There mm -hmm. there are ways. Uh, with uh, like adding some operation identifier or something like that. But le le let's think about it. Okay. Another question? Mm, looks like no. Uh, so one notice from me, I'm very happy that a lot of guys, more and more guys come back from vacation and pick up new task. Okay, guys, uh, see you next. Team Cup, see you next week. Well, guys, actually, I have one more point. Mm -hmm. So, Andrei Zabara is currently working on implementation of uh, tokens, uh, like retrieval token and revoc revocation of tokens. 
he is not on the meeting, but I had a call with him just like half an hour ago, and he has uh, this uh, create customer token implemented, and he's going to implement reward token as well. So most likely we will see something next week. And Alex, it looks like you have one more update. You are going to contribution day, and we <laughs> waiting uh, good, uh, a lot of tickets. <laughs> yeah. It will be great. Yeah, so, so today I'm leaving to Singapore, and in Singapore we are going to have a contribution day. And so far we have around like 15, 20 registered people. Uh, most likely not all, not all of them will, will join us, but I expect at least like 10 contributors coming and we will work with them on uh, issues and find something interesting in our backlog. Good. So how many pull requests do you commit to bring back? <laughs> Depends how many people we get. So, and do also, you know that you'll get at least 10 people? Hopefully, yes. Yes. And if, if they all will be working on GraphQL, I suppose we should So it's like 50 pull requests? Yeah, it might be like 100. Yeah. So we will, we will close all our backlog. We have 90 issues right now open. I expect all of them to be closed. Okay, you, that's uh, Valeria. I hope this meeting is recorded. Yes. Yeah, I'm recording it. I will cut this out. Okay, guys, uh, that's all. So, good luck and see you next week. Good weekends. Thank you. Have a great Bye. one. Bye. 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 Bye.